dairy yeah, again. That's right. And so there's such a strong correlation between the mucus that's, right. that's formed that's right. and the dairy. Um, and as Anne was saying, it's meant for a cow. It's not meant for the humans. Right. And we're the having sex. Mm -hmm. They want to take the relationship to another mm -hmm. level, but they don't want to be intimate yet mm -hmm. um, in terms of, of having sexual Hello and welcome to Right Decisions. I'm Tammy Moore Johnson, your host. It is indeed my pleasure to come to your homes weekly with a show that's created to provide tools for success. Today we're talking about being sober, but maybe not in the way you may reference being sober. We're talking about being sober as the Bible references it. Have you ever entered to your prayer time and as soon as you start praying, someone knocks at your door? What do you do? Do you ignore it? Or do you continue to focus on the spiritual? Well, that is what happens in the world today. We get bombarded with distractions, which takes us away from the spiritual perspective. The Bible tells us to not get drunk with the things of the, this world and to walk circumspectly. Let's discuss some hot topics as we talk about being sober. I've asked Minister Nehemiah Johnson to join me today to discuss the topic being sober. Thank you, Nehemiah, for joining us on the set. My pleasure. Absolutely. My pleasure. You know, last Sunday, we talked about the divine nature. That's right. That's and right. in doing so, you talked about that not to consider your own bodies. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to share how uh, someone came up to us Sunday afternoon and said how blessed she was and how yeah. you really minister. So I'm like going with the flow right now. I'm like, OK, Lord, That's the best I'm going to get Nehemiah mm -hmm. to come back on the mm -hmm. show and we're going to hit some of these topics that are currently in the news. Mm -hmm. And what he gave me was being sober. Being sober. So right. let's start with that. What is being sober? When they talk about being sober, what does the Bible, what, what does he mean when mm -hmm. he say be sober? Mm -hmm. Actually, when, he, when the Bible talks about be sober, it is talk, telling the believer, do not to be drunk yes. with the things of this world. Right. Do not be drunk or intoxicated by the things of mm. this world. And there's a scripture in Revelations that says that Babylon has called all nations to be drunk with the wine or the wrath of her fornications. Again, mm. Babylon, Babylon has called all nations to be drunk with the wine or the wrath of her fornication. So oftentimes when you hear, in the, you see in the word of God, it talks about wine, we think it about a beverage. And yeah, I know, exactly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But in this particular sense, it's not talking about a beverage. Mm -hmm. And according, in, you look in the book of Daniel, Daniel mm -hmm. abstained from something. Yes. He abstained from wine. And again, understanding what it means when it talks about wine. He's not necessarily talking about an alcoholic beverage. Absolutely. What he's talking about is actually the natural joy. Mm. The natural joy that this world actually offers. Mm -hmm. And when we get high, so to speak, or intoxicated on the natural joy of this world, that's when we lose our sobriety. Mm, mm. That's good. Absolutely. That's good. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing about it is that just like uh, in a drunk in the natural, you may be functioning, trying to function and not necessarily realize that you've been you're inebriated. Mm. So it's the same thing with the believer. The believer knows the word, the yes. believer goes to church, the believer right. professes the word, but doesn't realize that he's living a life that is absolutely away from the word of God. Mm -hmm. They can be drunk with the things of this world, mm -hmm. things with the world of the world system. That's right. Mm -hmm. So the sober is also being alert as mm -hmm. well. Being, absolutely. Okay. So it, would you say that the opposite of being sober is that you are so focused that it could be a distraction? Oh, of course. Absolutely. Can it's you elaborate a distraction. with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Absolutely. Let's go back in scripture. I like to deal with scripture, as yes, you know. Yes, absolutely. Because I want to have a point, a point of reference for everything. Everybody is familiar with Noah and the Bible. Mm -hmm. And Noah had sons, three sons. And of course, it tells us that Noah did what? He planted a vineyard. Mm -hmm. And once he planted the vineyard, it says that he drunk from the wine. And that's looking at something in the natural, but also we have to understand because he drunk from the wine and was intoxicated, his intoxication led to one of his sons sinning. Mm, and of yeah, course, that's good. yes, absolutely. And so when we think about that's from a natural perspective, but from a spiritual perspective is that Noah had been entrusted with something. Mm -hmm. He had been entrusted with teaching and making spiritual decisions. 
And because he became drunk or intoxicated, that means that his mind was at that point far from God. Yeah. And it caused him when at that point in time, it caused his son to sin. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing I love. Oftentimes when that actually account is given, people really don't focus on Noah's, uh, he caused his son to sin. What he did, he caused his son to sin. Mm. Now, there's a scripture, I think it's in First Peter, mm -hmm. and I want to say 2, mm -hmm. oh, 5 yes. and 8. I'll make Very sure familiar. I uh, get the, the right scripture where he tells us to be sober because yes. the devil is roaming around. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Elaborate on that piece. Absolutely. And the scripture says be, be sober, be mm -hmm. vigilant, because your enemy, Satan, is yeah, walking around right. like, like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. devour. Mm -hmm. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your enemy, your adversary, Satan, is walking around like a warring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. In other words, is that is that he cannot devour everyone. Mm -hmm. He cannot devour. That's why he's looking to see whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, is that if you are not vigilant and if you're not sober, you're already setting yourself up as prey for the evil one to actually devour. Mm -hmm. And now devouring, we have to understand is that is a temptation to sin mm -hmm. or an opportunity to sin. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. what it's talking about in that particular scripture. Yeah, and that was 1 Peter 5 and 8. That's, that's right. a good scripture. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna use a practical example here. Um, remember I was, okay, so I'm backing out of the garage. Your car mm. is on the opposite side, but behind me, I was talking on the phone. And it, you know, on the Bluetooth phone that mm -hmm. way. But I was distracted to the point where, and I mean, this is a regular routine where mm -hmm. I back up. I know your car is behind. Mm -hmm. You're actually standing there watching me leave out. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I almost hit your car. Yes. Because I was distracted. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I think it's important to, to understand that when we're talking about things that are going on in the world, that if we're not in tune, if we're not making it intentional mm -hmm. to pay attention to what the Holy Spirit is saying, That's right. that we're going to be distracted. And That's when we right. get distracted, then things happen. That's right. Praise the Lord. In this case, I didn't hit the car. Praise the I Lord. I mean, but you know, the, 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 my car alarm was going off. Like when you come too close to something, yes. I still didn't hear it. That's right. Because I was so engaged in the conversation. Mm -hmm. I mean, doing my regular routine, I know you park on that side, the alarm is going off, mm -hmm. but I did not hear it. I didn't Absolutely. pay attention because Absolutely. I was distracted. Had I been sober, which mm -hmm. meaning alert, y'all, in alert. this case, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> then, yeah. then I would have, you know, I would have been doing my regular, mm -hmm. I would have gone out. And I think that's what happens like when we are listening to so many lyrics on the music, mm -hmm. we got the radio going on, you got the billboards, you got television, you got um, you got people in your ear, you Absolutely. have so many noises, Absolutely. so much noise Absolutely. in your ear is that you're not sober. Absolutely, absolutely. And getting back to that, what you described about the car, and I was standing there as you were backing out the garage, as I often do, just standing there and watching. But immediately I noticed that you kind of deviated from your norm with backing out. I noticed immediately that you turned the wheel to a sharp angle, and that alerted me immediately <laughs> that I need to be paying so you attention were sober. here. I was so sober. <laughs> I was sober. <laughs> So as you begin to back out, I saw the angle in which you were backing out, and I knew that if you continue to back it at an angle, that means that you're going to actually impact, collide with the other car. So, and of course, that's just an uh, example where you were talking about being sober. Right. So I was there observing that. But at the same time, we have to realize, you mentioned the music, you mentioned different things that are going on in society. But here's the thing we have to understand is that that in itself is actually attaching to something that is within mm. us. That, what you're talking about, is actually attaching to something that it is within us that is not of God. Mm. So when we listen to various types of music, whatever the case may be, whether the, uh, it might be the lyrics or it might be the music itself, is that we have to understand that it's attaching itself to something in us that is not of God. And it has a word for that, they call it, Lust, L-U-S-T. Mm. And because we are sort of a hypersexual society, we think that lust has everything to do with sex. Right, right. Yeah. But spiritually, it's not really, it's not exactly. talking about it's just, sex. It's desire. It's right? talking about the certain appetites, the certain yeah. desires yeah. that we have within us. And we don't know, if we don't know that those things that are within us, we're setting ourselves up for the enemy, Satan, our adversary, to come against us, to distract us. 
-hmm. And once he does that, then it goes back to what we're talking about. We lose our sobriety. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. and then when we lose our sobriety, we don't it may not happen at that particular moment, but it's actually something that is being conceived within us. Mm -hmm. And as it's being conceived within us, just like giving uh, becoming pregnant over a period of time, then someone actually gives birth. Okay. So that's what Satan awfully does. He's actually enticing us to actually sin, and then it gives birth. Let's take a quick break, and mm -hmm. then we'll pick it up here, and we'll mm -hmm. come back. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Tammy Moore Johnson from Right Decision. Thank you so much for tuning in to our weekly show. If you like our platform and what I stand for, then please like us on Facebook. It's Right Decision with Tammy Moore Johnson. Also, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Again, Right Decisions with Tammy Moore Johnson. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to Right Decisions. We're talking about being sober. Nehemiah, before the break, we were talking about how the devil tried to get us not to be sober. He tried mm -hmm. to take that, take that away from us mm -hmm. so that we can, he can distract us. That's right. Right. Absolutely. And you were talking about if we have a lust that is something that is within us, mm -hmm. can you pick it up from there? Absolutely. Actually, there's scripture for that in James chapter one, where it talks about, it says that we're being tempted and it talks about the lust. And that lust actually turns to sin. And when that sin actually, the lust actually conceives, it gives birth to sin. Mm -hmm. And it talks about how that sin goes on. It reaches to a certain point and then there is death. So in other words, is that temptation itself is actually an opportunity or solicitation to sin. Mm -hmm. And we don't, we're not sinning unless we have something within us. And that is actually the lust itself. Mm, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. You know, I want us to kind of talk about, you know, we talk a lot at home and what the current events yeah, and, we do, don't and we? what's going Absolutely. on. Yes. But we as believers shouldn't mm -hmm. be distracted by what we see in the news. Mm -hmm. So let's hit a couple of little of those topics okay. and tell us how should a believer look at that? You know, being sober and alert, there's other things going on behind the scene or in the spiritual realm than what's in the natural. Mm -hmm. And sometimes Satan may use what's happening in the natural to distract us. Absolutely. So Let's take Absolutely. let's talk, start with, OK, you know, they're um, talking about impeaching the president. Yes. So mm -hmm. let's let's hit that topic as a believer. How should we be looking at that? OK, well, there's a word for that. And Paul says this in, in Ephesians chapter five, I think it's along verse 15. He says, walk circumspectly. Mm -hmm. Again, he says, walk circumspectly. And of course, this is for the believer. And of course, circumspectfully is mean you're looking at it from all angles. Mm -hmm. And I like to say looking at it from like you and I talk about looking at situation from a bird's eye view. Mm -hmm. In other words, you kind of is actually, you know, the word that says that we have been made to sit in heavenly Heaven. places. Mm -hmm. So while our feet are firmly planted on the ground in this earth, we're spiritually connected with God through fellowship and in communion. That's right. That's so right. we seated in heavenly places that we have a bird's eye view because what does it say? God says hi. And he looks low. Mm -hmm. So if we are communion with him. We're able to rise above and look down on situations and we're able to see things from all angles, not just the things that we, we actually hear and see. We can see like from a bird's eye view from all angles, mm -hmm. looking That's at good. it circumspectfully. Mm -hmm. So how does that relate to what you mentioned about right. impeachment? impeachment. Yep. So mm -hmm. We hear all this news buzz 24 seven and p impeachment is the word that you're hearing today. And of course, the president is talking about corruption. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, obviously, there is corruption that is going on. But here's the thing. And if we look at the corruption, you must understand that in this world, this world system is nothing less than corruption. Mm -hmm. So this entire world system is dealing with corruption. And we, that's the how we must look at it. So when they use the word impeachment or he uses the word corruption, we're not just looking at it from face value. We're looking at it from all angles, from that bird's eye view. So the believer itself has to understand is that it's not being influenced by any political party right. or political party ideology. It's not looking at it from a Republican viewpoint, from a Democratic viewpoint mm -hmm. or any other political party, whether it be uh, Unitarian or from mm -hmm. the Green Party, is that we're looking at it the only way how God's looking at it. Right. That's the way we must see everything. Mm -hmm. But see, the believer must understand mm -hmm. that 
oftentimes when new supports come about, it's designed to influence right. a particular That's situation. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, whether that is true or not, is that where, whether regardless it's true or not, it's only one way to look at it. How does God look at it? That's good. So in terms of is that we can't look at it from any ideological standpoint. We have to actually measure it against the word of God. What does mm -hmm. God say about it? Well, look at the scripture in Jeremiah chapter one, I think it's around verse 10. God says something specifically, profoundly to mm -hmm. the prophet Jeremiah. <laughs> he says, see, I have set thee over nations and over kingdoms mm -hmm. to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. That's good. He said, I see, I have set you over nations and over kingdoms. So nations and kingdoms, he's really talking about two different things. Nations, he's talking about from a earthly perspective and kingdoms, he's talking about from a spiritual perspective. Mm -hmm. So I have set you over nations and kingdoms to do what? To pull down corruption, mm -hmm. to throw down corruption, to cast out corruptions, to destroy corruptions. Mm -hmm. And he goes on to say is that because you have to be free from corruption because in order to build and to plant, you can't have a mingle or mix seed of corruption in that. So if he's talking to the president, is talking about corruption, mm -hmm. we must be able to look at it from a holistic perspective, not just where he may be talking about what happened in Ukraine, mm -hmm. but we look at corruption in all segments of society mm -hmm. or all segments in the world system. And we have the ability by the Holy Spirit in us and the word given to God to pull down corruption. That's good. To cast down corruption, to throw down corruption, to, cast, to, uh, to build and to plant in accordance with the word of God. So you're saying that as believers, when we see that happening, then we know what the spirit is behind that. We, and we need to be casting that spirit down. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because corruption itself is a spirit. Mm -hmm. It is a spirit that originated itself in Satan, the adversary. So we hear the word corruption. We can't dismiss it. We have to understand that it is a spirit that is operating in the land. And that's why he said, I have set you over kingdoms because we're talking about, say, the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And so we are to be able to speak to that as not only in kingdoms, but in the nation itself. You know, when you say those things and just to know that, you know, we have that authority and we mm -hmm. should be able to do this. That's even more important why we need to be sober and we alert. Must be, absolutely. We can't be distracted what we hear. We have to make sure we keep that communion mm -hmm. with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis, intentional. That's right. So we won't be distracted. Absolutely. You know, and, and then like you said, then we that corruption will go. That's right. Let's, let's take another case. Let's do uh, something else that's in the news. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the Dallas police mm. officer, the Texas police officer, Amy Geiger. That's okay, right. so mm -hmm. she just recently she would she went into um, an apartment thought it was hers. Yes, and she shot, mm -hmm. killed someone, Absolutely. unarmed, eating ice cream. Absolutely, you know, and she just got sentenced to mm -hmm. ten years. That's okay? right. And you can do years. probation in That's five right. years. Mm -hmm. How should we look at that mm -hmm. as believers? The believer only has one way to look at that. We can listen to the facts that are coming across the news, or we can actually believe the truth in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. There's difference in the facts than what the truth is. Mm -hmm. And of course, we know what those facts are. Uh, and of course, that led to an entire investig investigation of um, her background and what it brought out in court. There were some text messages that she actually made disparaging comments against a certain race. And of course, it was more than one text message and it showed where she had a pro an affair mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, with a partner of hers. Mm -hmm. But see, that's one thing about it. Going back to James chapter one, it says that talks about being tempted. Mm -hmm. No man can be tempted beyond what his own lust on. What is inside. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. So we actually, the believer should be able to look at that and say that one incident, the shooting, there was many things that precipitated that. Mm -hmm. There were a number of things that were happening before that actual shooting. Mm -hmm. Because the scripture tell us is that our lust gives us over to sin. Mm -hmm. The, the lust actually conceives and is actually sin is actually born from that. Mm -hmm. And then when it is finished and then there is death. Mm -hmm. What it's talking about literally or figuratively, there is still death there. Mm -hmm. So we look at that. She was actually set up by Satan himself. Right. You know what? Mm -hmm. I think this is a good time mm -hmm. to take another mm -hmm. little break Absolutely. and keep them hanging. How was she set up by Satan? We're okay. going to answer that when Absolutely. we come back. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. You may have an event that you would like to announce 
or if you are a business that would like to get your information to the public, consider advertising with Right Decisions. Right Decisions is aired on the Fox Network in the following counties, Richland, Calhoun, Lexington, Fairfield, Kershaw, Saluda, Lee, Sumter, Clarendon, Orangeburg, and Newberry. That's a total of 11 counties that can hear your message. Beyond reasonable rates and wide market opportunity, help impact the communities with a premise to make right decisions by supporting the program's platform. For more information, call 803-348-6517. Welcome back to Right Decisions. We're talking about being sober today. Before the break, Nehemiah, we were talking about the situation in Texas with yes. police officer Amy Geiger. Absolutely. And you said that Satan was setting her up. Can Absolutely. You, can you tell, elaborate on that? Absolutely. Satan did to her what he tries to do with so many of us. It's a setup. I know we hear that word, but it was a setup from the very beginning. Because when you actually look back to, uh, at the facts that were brought out in the case, it was text messages, and she had a, an, an illicit involvement. That was a setup from the very beginning because there was no sobriety there. Mm -hmm. And of course, it says that your lust bringeth forth sin, mm -hmm. and when it conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And that sin actually leads to something, and when it is finished, it brings forth death. So back when those, uh, the mindset of those text messages, she could not have been tempted only by only by the lust that was in her. Mm -hmm. So that it was already in her. Mm -hmm. So that's why those things actually worked out. And You're talking about the text messages that had the some text racist comments Absolutely, on those it, right. things were mm -hmm. in her heart. If right. it was not in her heart, she could not have been enticed or seduced by Satan. Mm -hmm. And the uh, other things that she did was in her heart, just mm -hmm. like we all have things in our heart. Well, and then also talk about the fact that she was working long hours. Yes, the 14, absolutely. Was it 14 hours? As I and recall. And she was tired. And, absolutely. And that's what the enemy tried to, tried to absolutely. do. Absolutely. He tries to get us beaten down and tired absolutely. where then we are not sober. That's right. We're distracted. Absolutely. And we're not alert. And then we, we're, Precisely. And then we'll do mistakes like that. And for her, uh -huh. It ended up what was inside of her came out, which was her quickly reacting and not thinking clearly Absolutely. and shooting someone. But for somebody else, it might be another type of sin. Absolutely. You know, so that's why it's important that the Lord instructs us to, to be mm -hmm. sober, be alert. Absolutely. He's saying that because Satan, mm -hmm. go back to that scripture, First Peter mm -hmm. 5, 8. He's seeking who he may devour. Absolutely. So if you're already worn out and you're mm -hmm. not alert, that's how he's going to come to you. He's going to come that way. You, I'm glad you brought that up. Remarkably, the scripture in the Bible talk about when Jesus will, got driven into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. Oh, that's good. Now, if Jesus had Jesus going to be tempted, who are we that we're not going to be tempted? Amen. But mm -hmm. see, he had nothing in him that Satan could get a hold of. Again, he had mm -hmm. nothing in him that Satan could get hold of. In fact, he said to Peter, in order to the disciples at a later point, he says, Satan, my adversary is coming, mm -hmm. but he hath Ooh, no thing in me. That's good. Yeah. Satan, my adversary cometh, but he had no thing in me. Mm -hmm. But he also says to Peter, you have something in you mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he says that uh, Satan has come to me because he has desires Peter to sift you like wheat. Mm -hmm. He says he desires to sift you like wheat because Satan has already identified, for lack of a better, he identified that is something that was in Peter that Peter was not aware of himself. Mm -hmm. So God allowed Peter to go through that testing. Mm -hmm. What was he tested with? Because Peter was self-confident. Mm -hmm. He was confident in self instead mm -hmm. of confident in Jesus, mm -hmm. his Savior at that moment. So we can all have things in us, whether we're a believer or not, we can have things in us that are not of God that gives opportunity for us to be uh, to be solicited to do evil. And that's the things that we have to understand. There's something in the flesh that's that right. we may not be aware of that gives opportunity for us to be solicited to do evil mm -hmm. in, against God. Mm -hmm. We talked about being sober yes, and being alert, absolutely. but how does one get to that point? Mm -hmm. What do we need to do? Mm -hmm. We have to mature. Mm -hmm. We. I, <laughs> We have to get to the point where we are maturing because it's more than just salvation. Salvation is the free gift of God. Amen. We do nothing for that. Mm -hmm. That's what God has done for us. 
beyond that is what we do for God. Mm -hmm. That's why sometimes if we have a misbelief in church that once we receive salvation, that's it. Mm -hmm. Yes, salvation, we're sealed by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But if that's the final thing, why does scripture tell us to work out our mm -hmm. own so, soul salvation? That's right. mm -hmm. So that's the part where we have to become matured mature in Christ. Mm -hmm. And if we don't become mature in Christ, that mm -hmm. means there is something in us that Satan can solicit and tempt us to sin because we have passions and lust that are in this body. Mm, that'll work out your own salvation. Yes, that's what the scripture says. It says work out your own soul salvation. And I think it's important to eliminate distraction. Mm -hmm. Well, eliminate things that are in your ear, too, so you can hear the spirit mm -hmm. and you can't spend time. Mm -hmm. You know, it goes back where we talk about those lyrics, music, TV. You know, when, when we sit down, we watch something mm -hmm. that we know that the enemy, Satan, is pushing That's right. an agenda. Absolutely. It's going to come and grab hold what's, what's in you. Absolutely. 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 Mm. You know, it's really interesting, if I can say it like this, is for any believer, is that what, what degree you believe in Christ is already manifested in your life. Mm. Whatever degree, how much you believe in Christ is already manifested in your life. So we're praying for particular things. We're asking, we're petitioning God for certain things. And he says, just believe. Believe. Mm -hmm. Simply believe. The more that we believe, then we're going to see the manifestation of his word in our lives. But until such time, until we mature to the point where we really believe, then we actually can be given over to Satan by our lust mm -hmm. that we're not even aware of. You mentioned music a moment ago. There's a reason that you have certain types of music and certain frequencies and certain lyrics and music because it's actually feeding something that is in the flesh. Mm -hmm. That's why we can actually be singing certain lyrics. We might not ha have our mind on a particular song, but what is it that it causes a certain lyric or certain music to rise up in us? That is the actually something that has been fed into our flesh and actually attached itself. See, that can be a whole nother show by itself about oh. the music and lyrics. Yeah. So maybe I'm going to put you on the spot. We're going to do a video blog <laughs> <laughs> and we'll have it where they can tune in to that. So that was really good. Well, I appreciate your time as always. My pleasure. All right. My pleasure. Through our discussion today, it has been our objective to provide key nuggets on being sober. God said, I had given you everything that pertained to life and God in this. Certainly renew your minds with the word of God equips us as believers to live a life above and free from the deceit and distractions present in the world systems. Because we live in this world, our bodies may be affected to a degree, but our soul and spirits do not have to be infected or corrupted. For we worship God in spirit and truth. Here at Right Decisions, it is our objective to leave you with tools and strategies to make your life easier and more successful. There's no right decisions without making the best and ultimate decision of all times. That is making Jesus Christ your Lord. If you do not know the Lord, why don't you make Jesus Lord of your life today and invite him into your heart? Just simply believe your heart that Jesus died for your sins, repent of your sins, and confess out loud Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Now when Jesus returns, you'll be able to join him. Thank you for tuning in to Right Decision, a show with a positive message. If you'd like to contact me, email me at TuesdayMateRightDecisions at gmail.com. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next Sunday. Goodbye for now.